Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today I'm just working around the workshop doing all sorts of little odd jobs that needed to get done over the last few weeks. But you know I've got some really cool tips that I want to show you so let's get started on those. This is from David in Texas and he says, you know when you get medicines and you open them up and they have a little desiccant in it, uh, it's like a little silica gel and it's to keep the pills dry inside. I usually just throw these out, but he's been saving these and putting them in his router bit cabinet. And what a great place to use something that normally you would throw out, but now it helps to keep the rust off your router bits. What a great idea. Thanks, David. A roll of paper towel in my shop lasts a long time because I prefer to use cloth towels whenever I can. But sometimes I need paper towels and when I need them, it's usually when my hands have something sticky or runny or something on them that I need to get off quickly. And it's hard to tear off a sheet at a time. But Paul from Oregon says, always leave a little piece of paper towel in the top of your roll of paper towel. That way when your hands are sticky or have something on them, you can just grab it and now you can quickly clean your hands without fussing trying to tear towels off. That is such a great little tip, Paul. I love that. Thanks for that. For all of you out there using pocket holes, here's a great tip for filling those pocket holes. I know many of you already use long dowels and cut them off into pieces like this, but here's a little trick from Bob. Now Bob says to cut those dowels after you've got them glued in there, you could use your multi-tool. And depending on the kind of job that you want done, you could use a very thin piece of a veneer and use that to just raise it up a little bit and then use a hand plane to or sand it down, uh, but even without that, I'm going to show you what a great job this does just without anything. So you could come in from underneath or you could come in from the back side, you could even come in from the sides, uh, whatever works best for you. I'm going to try it this way and uh, see how that works. There we go. A little bit of sandpaper and that would be just perfect. Now this tip is coming from Gary and Gary says you need to remove the insert from your table saw and on my table saw using magnets on the side I always have my ruler handy, my um, square, one of my squares, and what Gary suggests is rather than trying to align your blade this way, because very often it's down inside your saw, another way of doing it, and it's equally as accurate, if not more accurate, and you can just lay your level or your square on there. Let me show you a better picture here. There's a little better view of it. Now I'm going to put a light from the back and when you do that, you can see that, how accurate you can get there. You can get that very, very accurate by using a light at the back there. It's a great idea, Gary. And it's so handy to do. You don't have to wind the blade up, check it, put it back down. You can do it while it's there. And one of the problems with doing it when the insert is on top, very often I've seen where the insert is actually proud of the tabletop. So you got to crank it up and I'm watching people do this and I can see that the insert is proud of the table. So, because when you go like this, it bumps against it. So I know they're not getting an accurate vertical um, alignment. So that's a great idea. Thanks Gary for that. Now this tip is from Ronald and Ronald is making what we call kerf cuts and that's where you make a multiple multitude of cuts and you make them very close to the top of the wood and that way you can bend that wood. And I'm going to do that in a moment here but he discovered a really neat way of making these even kerf cuts and what he was using, now I don't know what blade he was using, um, but he's using 
ordinary tongue depressors, and I don't know, again, how thick they are or what blade he's using, but I'm going to show you here today what you can do with the same kind of idea. Now, what I've done, my tongue depressors are pretty thin, and what I've done is I have attached them to some strips of wood that I had that I, that I just have laying around. I don't even throw out strips of wood like this. I keep them, and what I've done is I've just taken them and stacked them against the fence and now I can go and make one cut, take away that one, make my second cut, take away that one, make my third cut and so on. I don't have to re sort of remeasure or kind of guess at it. I can make perfect cuts using this kind of methodology and again it depends how thick the wood is and what you want them to look like and how thick your blade is, but I'm going to show you what this looks like, so it's really cool. And look at how nice and even those cuts are. I thought that was just a great idea. Now my wood might not bend all that pretty because I don't have nice straight grain here. I just grabbed a, a piece of wood that I could just do a test with. But you can see that's what a kerf cut, that's how you bend wood, one of the ways you bend wood. Typically you'll also moisten that and you can put a little bit of heat on that. And if I'd have made more kerf cuts, you could actually take that uh, and make a 90 degree angle on it. But uh, that's a great idea, Ron, using these tongue depressors or little strips of wood, you know, whatever works for you, uh, and stacking them up next to your fence uh, and using them, taking them away one at a time. Uh, it's just a great idea. Well, that concludes my quick tips for today, and I want to thank everybody who sends me tips. I'm always interested to read them, and you know they don't have to be complex. For example, the paper towel one, you know, what a great idea. I'm always struggling <laughs> trying to get a paper towel off when I, the rare times that I need it because I don't have one handy, and now I will. So I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.